Hi guys, Squall here and welcome to another Train Sim World 2020 video. In this video, we're going to focus on the East Coast Way Line. This is the brand new DLC for Train Sim World 2020, which focuses on Southern England, specifically on the Brighton to Hastings Line, and there's a branch off down to Seaford, all of it focused on the Southern Coast of England, which is very picturesque. Now, before we get going on the DLC, a quick message about something which you may be interested in. You may remember this time last year, the guys over at BOTB arranged a massive simulator bundle competition for me, packed with equipment which I handpicked. Well, they've done it again. Squirrel's spectacular simulation setup contains £18,000 worth of simulation gear, including a high-end overclock PC, a gaming laptop, not one, but two of those massive ultra-wide monitors I've showed you, HTC Vive, gaming chair, racing cockpit, steering wheel and pedals, Thrustmaster flights and gear, flights in panels, it's all in here. And you can win the whole lot for a ticket price of 90 pence. It's a worldwide competition, anyone over 16 can play, and if you don't like this amazing simulation bundle, and frankly, why wouldn't you? You can still win gaming bundles, simulators, consoles and gadgets in BOTB's weekly lifestyle competition, with tickets starting at 15 pence. Link is in the video description. Good luck to you all. And remember, someone has to win it. Now, there are two locomotives that feature primarily in this DLC. One is the Class 377 and the other one, the Class 66. If you have a quick look at the timetable, I can explain better. This is the Class 377. This is a British dual voltage electric multiple unit, which was originally manufactured in Derby by Bombardier Transportation, all that ended in 2018. This is primarily a compu uh, commuter train, and it's generally in configurations of 4, 8, and 12 cars. If you actually have a look at the routing, you get a better idea of what the actual track layout is in this DLC. And it primarily goes from Brighton over here all the way over to Hastings with this branch line here, which goes down to Seaford. That's the majority of the track. You can see there's some little bits and pieces sticking out. This is Brighton Station. It's quite a big and busy station, and we'll see more of that later on. If you go back up to here, we can also see that the Class 66 is included. Uh, this is primarily for the freight operations. This is a six-axle diesel electric locomotive, uh, which was in production. Very reliable, um, very reliable freight train. However, I think they had to stop using them in the UK because it couldn't meet the latest emission standards. I also noticed that some other locos work on this line as well in the timetable mode. The Class 45, the Class 47, and the Class 40. If you go back to the main menu, scenario-wise, it comes with six scenarios. One of the more interesting ones, I think, which I've not tried yet, is this freight one, uh, Cutting Closure, which sees you sort of helping out in some emergency. So we're going to try those later on, but not today. In terms of journeys, there are a ton of journeys split into two chapters one for the 377 and one for the freight train operation on the 377 you can see there's absolutely loads of journeys that you can do as well as all of the timetables so what we're going to do is pick something to do and have a go of the 377 okay i have picked out a journey which goes from lewis to brighton it's a 2l33 it starts at 1322 brings us in sometime around 1340 so about just over 20 minutes it should take us uh, let's get going here we need to unlock so what we need to do is put the master key in first and then we need to put the direction switch into the forward position and then we should be able to release the doors on the right hand side there we go the weather outside is pretty much what it's been like in the uk for the last month <laughs> just rain and general mist and horribleness it's it's really really appropriate really damp weather let's put the um day running lights on there we go it's a bit better uh put the day running lights on we'll leave all the bits and pieces off i haven't got the manual for this train yet because i'm using a pre-release version of the dlc so that the manual is not yet available uh, but i can tell you that um lots of the buttons work for wipers and horn that kind of thing it has the adbs although i don't know if adbs is on this line by the look of it it may well be but I've not confirmed that yet. Um, just wanted to jump in and get you this DLC just ahead of release, hopefully. Um, master control block, not really sure what that's all about yet. I need to look into that stuff on the manual. There's the aircon system, which we can probably want to turn that up for the passengers. 
Okay, let's get ready. Oh, we have to wait till 1324. So 30 more seconds yet. Yeah, you can control the headlights and the taillights. Uh, the window and door operates from here as well. Like that. Uh, you can get up, of course, and you can even, you know, go and visit the passengers if you want to. It has a first class section and a standard class over here. So, you know, if you've ever traveled in, in the south of England, certainly, you'll, you'll definitely have seen these trains. You'll probably most likely have been on one. I've definitely been on them. Uh, they're pretty standard. This is a four-car setup as well, uh, because it's only a short journey from Lewis down to Brighton. It's more of a short commute. Right, here we go. Let's lock the doors. We shall get going. Uh, if we were to do the whole Hastings route, that's probably going to be an eight-car, I'd imagine. Uh, right, directions is forward. So they're pretty simple to operate these trains. It's just a single lever which has four power settings and I think two, two or three brake settings and then an emergency brake setting. So you should be able to keep that switch um, exactly in forward for most of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's get the wipers on actually. Intermittent. Let's put them on slow for now. Make sure we don't exceed that 10k. Oh. That's a very squeaky wiper. Blimey. Squeaky, squeaky. It's also got the digital display on the front, but um, I don't know if that's something you can control. I've not actually looked into it. These systems here don't appear to be operational. Uh, so whether you can actually set the destination on here, uh, I haven't actually... Oh, this is where all the isolation switches are. AWS and stuff is all here. It's got a blind there. Oh, nice. Okay. So the blind operates as well. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually set the sign or whether it's just set by the um, the route. Okay, let's get some power on. Next stop will be uh, Falmer at 1331. Falmer's 4.2 miles away by the look of it. And our current track speed is 55 miles an hour. Now, admittedly, this weather is not going to give you the best in terms of scenic view, but it will certainly give you an idea of what it's like to travel on the south coast uh, in winter. It is a lot like this, unless you get a nice winter's day. In which case, you get very low sun and get blinded. Not 0.7 miles, there's a drop down to 70, we're not going to worry too much about that. I will jump out to the external camera so you can see things a bit better. I should press the back camera as well, and set one up like this. Like an over the shoulder type view. Just slightly exceeded the speed limit. But yeah, this, um, if you look on, a, on Google Maps, if you look where Brighton is, I don't know if you're familiar with the UK, but if you look down, Brighton's on the very south coast. And this line, uh, effectively, if you actually look at Brighton Station on a map, um, as you come out of Brighton Station, it branches off in approximately three directions. One goes along the coast west uh, towards, uh, is it Plymouth, that kind of direction. The north branch goes up towards London, and then the east branch, which is the track we're on at the moment, uh, goes off towards Hastings. Uh, Hastings is another coastal town um, on the southeast of England. And what we're doing is we're effectively coming in um, from the Hastings direction, so we're, we're actually travelling more or less west or kind of southwest-ish. So we'll be coming in from uh, from the east into Brighton. So approximately coming along and, and, and banking left. Now Lewis itself, which is where we started, is about nearly halfway along the line between Brighton and Hastings. Probably more like a third of the way along the line. And it's a small town. And from just after Lewis, there's a branch that goes down towards Seaford, uh, which is also on the coast and sits roughly between Brighton and Hastings. And Seaford is... Uh, is in this as well as is a little just before Seaford there's a little um, town I think called New Haven which has I think there's a port there so you, you might see some jobs in this that go from New Haven as well maybe shipping some stuff from the freight side of things I haven't looked at the class 66 jobs at all so I've no idea at this stage but I thought we'd jump into this nice little commuter run initially just keep my eye on the, uh, the speed trend there we're 1.8 miles away. We're making reasonable time. And we're in basically open British countryside at this point. I 
almost half a mile before there's a speed drop. Interestingly, the speed limit is still 70, so it's not actually changing, but we're going to have to get ready. The brakes on these trains generally work pretty well, as long as you kind of um, allow enough time. We are climbing a little bit. I don't know if that's going to level out. If I remember Brighton, um, the, the bit we'll be coming in on will take us... Um, will take us over a really spectacular arched bridge. It's really nice. Uh, and we'll be coming in onto that as we bank left uh, into Brighton. That's a nice bridge, that is. Uh, because I think, if I remember, Brighton's... The topology of Brighton is such that they... When they originally built the train line, they had to build a lot of, like, bridges and tunnels and stuff. To, to the elevation change near Brighton is quite a lot. I'm almost getting that right. So. It's less than a mile away. Okay, at least go back to cruise. There we go. I have a tendency to talk too much and then completely miss my braking points. So let's get the brakes on. There we go. Yeah, you can see that the, the brakes are pretty powerful as long as you get on them soon enough. They really can shave the speed off. That looks good. Okay, we'll just take the brakes off and cruise in. So I actually overdid it. Yeah, there is an AWS block on the floor, so it does imply that this line does have AWS. So what I'll probably do is, as soon as I get hold of the manual, I'll have a quick read through and um, get that system turned on. There we go. That will do nicely. Okay, release the doors on the left. And why are they... Come on, camera. Camera's so weird the way it jumps around. I hate that. While we're doing that, we'll have a quick look at the timetable. So uh, this is an all stopping service from Lewis down to Brighton. So the next stop is Mulskum at 13.34. Yeah, this this kind of jumping thing. I've always hated that about trains. Well, I wish they just wouldn't do it. I wish it would just clip or something. Or at least be an option. Oh, we have to wait until 30. It's too early yet. We're actually 30 seconds early. Spectacular. All right, while it's doing that, let's have a quick look around the platform then. Oh, there's another train. So it looks like these, uh, these are scheduled to meet effectively, and then probably depart at the same time, approximately the same time. So this is Falmer, where we're at right now. You are way over the line though, girl. Way over that line. You should definitely not be there. Okay, lock doors. Let's not waste any time. Wait for the light to go out. Yeah, she really shouldn't be that close to the edge, should she? Naughty, naughty. In a game that basically, whenever you go on the track, it pops up and goes, Warning, it is dangerous to play on the track, blah, blah, blah. You think in a game that preaches that kind of thing, it wouldn't put AI passengers standing dangerously close to the edge. <laughs> I digress. I wonder if I should put that on. It's a mid, maybe. Probably just new. I think we'll do on intermittent, hopefully. It's a bit squeaky, isn't it? Alright, we're going down a decline now, if you look going downhill so our speed is going to trend slightly upwards but that's okay because the speed limit did as well so this is your atypical British countryside right here let's put it in off and cruise a little bit there is a tutorial for this train that's about 10 minutes it takes you over the basics of it um, and obviously does the, the usual kind of how to, you know, if there's an emergency situation, how to reset the the train. Some gradual braking on. Uh, but it basically involves to putting that into emergency, putting the direction switch back to neutral, then lifting it out of emergency. And it just kind of resets the whole thing. Yeah, 
I think we're good. Possibly breaks a little bit too early, but I'd rather be a bit too early than a bit too late. Nice. So yeah, about about 20 miles per hour on the entry into the platform is uh, perfectly good. Oh, look at that. Nice gradual braking. That was good. Okay. Release. And we have a look at the timetable again. Uh, this is Millscombe, meant to be leaving at 13.34, so I think we're slightly late according to this. Next up is London Road in three minutes' time, so it's quite a tight schedule, but you can see we're not that far away from Brighton already. It is a very short run. Passengers. I wish all these systems were operational. I'd like to see more of that stuff. I've also noticed that um, third-party stuff, third-party scenarios have started to become available, which is, on the one hand, exciting. On the other hand, it's about time. <laughs> but yeah, just trains have started making stuff. Trains in world. I would love to know how much scripting and programming they're actually allowed to do on the new platform compared to the old train sim platform because let's face it once you once third parties get hold of things that's where they usually start to make some very interesting stuff so i'll have to check that out right this is a very short accelerate decelerate type affair i think There's a speed limit of 30 miles an hour coming up in just over half a mile. Something to be aware of. That's probably just before uh, there's a yellow signal coming up as well. But I'm guessing maybe there's a red light at the station. As we get towards Brighton, you, and those uh, those lines I talked about start to merge in, it really does get quite busy at Brighton. And you see there's a lot of crossover tracks as well. I have no doubt that we'll end up having to wait to get into the platform at Brighton. There we go. Nice smooth deceleration for the passengers. This is London Road. Very close to Brighton now, so we're very near the seaside. You can hear the seagulls as well. If you put it on summer weather, I think you hear the seagulls a lot more. Thirteen forty, yeah, so we're only like three, four minutes away. Which is cool. It's got the ability to couple. Oh, it's got a whistle. It's got the ability to couple and decouple down here as well. This is all your door closing stuff. It's the cab light, which is like, you know, at night time that would probably come in nice and handy. Right now we don't really need it. Then next stop, Brighton. Right, we've got a yellow aspect coming up. We've also got a 30 mile an hour speed limit about to kick in, so we don't want to accelerate too much. There's a sign. And a 20 mile an hour as we come in. Yeah, this is it. This is the bridge. Look at this. I mean, just look, there's houses down there. Look at this. This thing just stomps right through the middle of this housing. That is some serious piece of engineering. Probably... Probably Victorian-style 
when everything was made out of brick and arch bridges. Fantastic. Fantastic engineering. And still standing as well. Because I was looking at the bridge, I missed the 20 speed limit drop. Okay, so this is Brighton Station. This is the east line, as we're saying. That's the north line, and over to the other side is the west line, and they all split off in three directions. We'll probably go into that left siding here, the left platform. No, nope, we're not. We're not doing that. We're going right into the heart of it. Yeah, so Brighton Station, as you can see, is basically like a... It looks like it was it was expanded at some point. You see the giant covers there. There was one of them. It looks like another one was added later, maybe. And then another line bolted on the end with a, with a roof. <laughs> they couldn't be able to extend it. But it was a pretty busy place. As you can see, and you know, graphics-wise, they've done a cracking job. On it. So what I might do is, uh, in the next video, we'll try one of the one of the Class 66 routes. There we go. Unlock the doors. Yeah, I might try one of the Class 66 routes and see what that's like. Turn the wipers off. Lights off. Welcome to Brighton. We'll have a look at the uh, score report in a second, see how we did. I'm trying to think, if you get this train into London, I think it goes into Croydon. Could be wrong. That would be my guess, would be East Croydon. I think we did okay. Slightly broke the speed limit there and then just a tiny bit at the end, but on the whole, I think it was pretty good. Stop and accuracy was within four yards. Um, due and actual times were pretty much bang on. So, yeah, you earned a gold medal. Nicely done. Okay. That's uh, the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. It was a Class 377. I think in the next one we'll take a look at the freight side of things and see how we get on. Uh, that DLC, by the time you watch this video, this DLC should now be available uh, on Steam if you want to take a look. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy training.